Hello family, my name is Bumi Banjo and you're welcome to The Maximum. This is part two of the Abundant Life series and today I'm going to be talking about the abundance mindset. Mindset refers to the ability to see limitless potential in every area of your life. And since we're talking about the abundance mindset, why don't we talk a little bit about the mind? I'm sure you've always heard this saying, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. The mind is a very crucial part of the human being's existence. It's where we do our thinking, it's where we process the choices available to us, and it's where we ultimately determine our course of action. Our thoughts are powerful because the quality of a man's life is ultimately determined by the quality of that man's thoughts. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23 in verse 7, and I'm going to be reading the New American Standard Bible translation. It says, for as he sinks within himself, so he is. Our lives are made by our thoughts. Our lives, the life you live, the life I live, is made by my thought and your thoughts. What kind of thoughts are going on in your mind? Are they good thoughts? Perhaps that's why the Bible said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. What we think about is very, very crucial to the quality of life that we lead. An abundance mindset is absolutely necessary if you are going to be living the abundant life that we're talking about. Remember, John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. Have it to the full, the amplified version of the Bible says, until it overflows. Be a blessing to somebody else. And that's what an overflowing kind of life, an abundant kind of life affords us to do. All right, so we know that abundant thoughts lead to an abundant life. It also means that a scarcity mindset leads to a life of scarcity. But I want to talk today about where we get our thoughts from. Where do we get our thoughts from? Number one, we get our thoughts from our environment. Yeah, our environment shapes our thoughts, shapes how we think. For example, the children of Israel had lived in the land of Egypt for about 430 years. And by now, <laughs> they'd been in bondage for that long. And so they were always thinking subservience they were always looking at themselves the way god was not looking at them at them they always thought they were lesser than everybody else because they had lived in an environment of bondage for so long you'll agree with me 430 years is a lot and so it was difficult for them to understand or to apprehend at what god had for them which was the promised land of canaan a land flowing with milk and with honey a land that you and I would desire, but because of the environment they grew up in, their thoughts had been shaped by less than the best. And that's what they subscribed to. And because of that, most of them never made it to the promised land. So our environments do shape our thoughts. So we get our thoughts from our environment, that's number one. Number two, we get our thoughts from our company. The company we keep have the ability to influence our thoughts. You've probably heard the saying, you are only as good as the company keep. Guess what? If you run with wolves, you will howl. <laughs> if you run with eagles or you walk with eagles or you fly with eagles, you will soar higher than you could ever imagine. 
So, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Let's put some Bible on it, why don't we? It says, be not deceived. Evil discourse, that's evil conversations, corrupts pleasant minds. Evil discourse corrupts pleasant minds. So, our company can determine the kind of thoughts we think. Number three, our belief system. Our belief system. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says in the NIV version, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So the pattern of this world that it's referring to is the world's way of thinking. It says, don't be conformed to the world's way of thinking. And when he talks about the world, he's referring to the human or fleshly way, the carnal way of thinking, as opposed to the divine or the godly way of thinking. It's just saying, don't think like other human beings. Think like God, who is the ultimate, right? Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 to 9, in the NIV version says, this is God speaking. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. I want to think high thoughts. I don't know about you. I want to think thoughts of abundance, not thoughts that are base thoughts, not thoughts of scarcity, not thoughts that won't lead me to my desired destiny. And that's what God is saying. God is saying, my thoughts are superior to man's thoughts. You want God's kind of ideas? Think God's kind of thoughts. Yes, because that's what's going to get you and I to become the ultimate of what God has called us, to get to the zenith of God's best for us. In Jeremiah chapter 29, 11, this is God still speaking in the New King James Version. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, God thinks too. And his thoughts, he said, are thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God thinks, and he's also given us our mind as a thinking faculty, but he wants the thoughts that are proceeding out of our minds to be thoughts that will lead us to abundance, which is what his will is for you and I. All right, so how do I develop an abundance mindset? Have you subscribed yet to this channel? It's new but I want you to subscribe. If you know that what you're getting here is beneficial to you, I want you to please subscribe. I want you to share the link and let's make this gospel of Jesus Christ public. Thank you. All right, so how do I develop an abundance mindset? Number one, be intentional about what feeds your thoughts. Be intentional about what feeds your thoughts. In other words, what I'm saying is guard your heart. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 in the New American Standard Bible says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. That is huge. In this scripture, the heart and the mind are used interchangeably. It says, guard your heart above all else. Before you guard your property, <laughs> guard your heart, all right? For it determines the course of your life. Watch what your mind is exposed to. Who are you listening to? What is the source of the information that you are getting and that you're pondering on that is shaping your life? Mark chapter 7 verse 21 in the Berean Study Bible says, For from within the hearts of men come evil thoughts or limiting thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, and so on and so forth. So let's guard our hearts. You want the thoughts that you that, that will build your life, you want thoughts that will take you to the ultimate of God's best for you, you want thoughts that will lead to abundance in every area of your life, guard what is coming into your heart. If it is garbage in, believe me, it's gonna be garbage out. Junk in, junk out. But if it is good in, it's gonna be good out, all right? So number two, surround yourself with people who have an abundance mindset. Surround yourself with people who have an abundance mindset. Surround yourself with people who are going in the same direction you want to go. 
Judas never had an abundance mindset. He was one of the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, but he was different in that his own mindset was just different. He had a limiting mindset. He was a thief. Not only was he stealing from the treasury, he was mad at the woman with the alabaster box who had broken the box uh, of fragrant, expensive fragrant oil and, and wiped Jesus' feet with this fragrant oil. He thought she was wasteful, but that's because he had a scarcity mindset. His thoughts were not pure. His thoughts were not good. His thoughts were not wholesome, right? And so he thought she was wasteful. He eventually betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver to betray the savior of mankind. Surround yourself, I say again, <laughs> with people who have an abundance mindset. All right, because people who have abundance mindset are not misers. They are givers. They're not wasteful or frivolous in spending, but they know that it is more blessed to give than to receive. People with an abundance mindset are happy about other people's success and not just their own. They're not people who want to pull you down. So please surround yourself with those kind of people, people who have an abundance mindset. Number three, think big. <laughs> Think big. Don't limit yourself and your potential. God has placed treasure in earthen vessels. That's what the Bible says. There is so much inside you and I. There's limitless potential. Be excited about maximizing that potential. Do not limit yourself in any way. Dream big. See big. Think big. Go for big. Just big. <laughs> Be excited about maximizing your potential. Be excited about harnessing your gifts and your talents. They are waiting to be harnessed. The Bible says the earth is groaning, awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. We are the sons of God. And he has placed treasure, tremendous treasure in us. And so please, think big. Don't limit your thoughts. God has given us that thinking faculty to be able to imagine. And guess what? Because we serve an Ephesians 3.20 God, the God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever ask or even imagine, you can best believe that God can still and will still supersize whatever you put in his hands. So please don't limit yourself. Don't limit your God. Think big. God said in Isaiah chapter 54 verse 2, enlarge the place of your tent stretch your tent curtains wide do not hold back lengthen your cords strengthen your stakes all right okay so we have just a few more number four plan people with an abundance mindset plan plan proverbs chapter 24 verse 27 in the new living translation says do your planning and prepare your fields before building your house. You thought big about a huge mansion? <laughs> the Bible is saying this. Do your planning. Jesus said, who wants to build a tower that does not first of all sit down and count the cost? That's planning. Plan. Your future is bright, but you've got to plan for it. The person with an abundance mindset does not leave things to chance. No, no, no. He or she plans for the future. So plan, plan. All right? Enough said about that. There's a scripture in the Bible, God talking about, go to the ants, you sluggard. I ain't calling you a sluggard, I'm just saying. Go to the ants. They prepare for winter in the summer or in the spring. We too ought to plan. All right? Number five, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> the person with an abundance mindset is a go-getter. Go for it. Seize every opportunity. Refuse to get easily discouraged. Go for the possibilities that are open to you. Don't only see hindrances because opportunities come draped as hindrances. Go for it. Okay, David was an example of someone who had an abundance mindset. He was faced with Goliath because the Israeli army could not fight Goliath. People were scared, including Saul, the king. Everybody was shivering until David came. 
David was like, what's going to be given to this guy, to the guy who brings down this giant? And Eliab, his brother, who had a scarcity mindset, not an abundance mindset, a limiting mindset, said, what you doing here, David? Get out of here. You can't do anything. But David did not pay him any attention. David went ahead and asked what would be given to the guy who brings down this giant. And they told him. And because of David's ability to go for it, to be a go-getter, he ensured that his family never paid taxes anymore because that was one of the benefits of whoever brought down this giant, including Elia, by the way. So be a go-getter. Go for it person with an abundance mindset goes for it, knowing that they're not going alone. God is for you. He will fight for you. He will stand by you and success will be your testimony in Jesus name. Lastly, but not the least, the person with an abundance mindset gives God all the glory. They give God all the glory. Listen to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17 to 18. I'll be reading the Berean study Bible. It says, you might say in your heart, the power and strength of my hands have made this wealth for me. But remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you the power to gain wealth in order to confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers even to this day. We must never forget, if we're going to continue to abound with blessings, that God is the source of every good and every perfect gift that we have. And we ought to give him all the glory, give him back the kudos that belongs to him. An abundance mindset is what we're talking about. And if you say you want to be a person with an abundance mindset, give honor to whom it is due. I've enjoyed journeying with you today. I hope you were blessed by this part two of the Abundant Life series. I look forward to seeing you another time. But before we go, please again subscribe, share this link comment whatever it is you want to do on this youtube channel it's still brand new but we're hoping that through this means we'll be able to take the gospel to the world god bless you again it's Bumi banjo and this has been the maximum i'll see you next week